Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we will be learning about text to columns, which is often used to split cell values into multiple columns. We'll be exploring multiple options that are there within text to columns. First, assume you have a data which has surname and name. Now you would want to split those two values in to two different columns using the comma in between. In such a case, you will be using delimited option of text to columns. However, when you have a data structure where it seems that you can draw straight lines in between the data set to cut them into different columns, in such a case, you will be using fixed width. Let's see them both in action. First, I have chosen a group of data set. Then I go to data tab. Next, I go to text to columns. Now I'll choose next and I'll choose not space, but comma as a delimiter. It cuts the data into two different halves and you can see that in the preview window below. I'll press next key and then I'll ensure that the destination is changed from A4 to the next cell B4. This ensures the final output starts from B4 and does not replace the existing data set. So that was example number one. Next, let me take the example of fixed width. In this case, I do not have any comma which divides the data. One can argue that I do have space in between. However, when I go to text to column and try to use delimited with the delimiter of space, you notice that the description part of the data is getting cut erroneously into multiple columns. Now I would want all the description to be one single value string. In such a case scenario, I'll go back and I'll try the fixed width. Now, after choosing fixed width option, let me go to next. In this step, you will see thin lines cutting the data into multiple columns. One, you can decide to drag it and move it to any direction you would want. Next, you can double click to remove it or you may click once in the area to bring it back. Since I want only three columns, I would delete the third line. So now you'll have column number one, column two and column three. Next, just like last time, I will change the destination and bring it to the cell adjoining to the data. Next, I press finish. Wow, it seems the data has been cut into different columns. But if you notice carefully, the item number has lost the preceding zeros. If you compare the original data with our answers, you will see the missing values. Now the question is, how do I retain those values? To find the answer, let me go back. I'll choose the data again, go to data tab, click on text to columns, click on next, ensure that I have two separate lines and I delete the third line. Next, I change the destination just like last time. And then the most important option. You'll notice under the data preview, there are headings called general above every column. Now what I can do is I can choose the second column. It blackens out and then I decide to use the option text. Now, what does this mean? If I read from the beginning, it says this screen lets you select each column and set the data format. Now here you're deciding that the data format of the chosen column marked in the black area below is going to be text. Hence, once you finish the process, the output will be stored as text. Let's see what happens next. There you go. You are able to retain all the zeros that were there in the original data set. So what we saw in this process, that are format of the output column. You can set the data format as per the options given under the column data format. In the current case scenario, we had taken the help of text. So now I am going to the sheet format one where I have a series of three numbers on the left hand side. Now look at the formula of sum. It is capturing all the three numbers, but it is not giving me the correct total. The correct total should have been hundred. 
Now, the reason why this is happening is because one of the numbers is stored as text. So if you are faced with such a problem with a larger data set, what is the right way to convert all of them in a general or a neutral format? You can choose the data series, go to data, next go to text to column, next ensure that you have not checked on any one of the options in delimited. This is because you do not want to split the data. Next, this time you can choose that particular column carefully and keep the option general. Once you press finish, all the data is now neutral. Now, if you try to apply a sum formula, you will get the correct total. So if you've understood the logic next time, you may simply choose the data, go to data tab, text to column, and simply press finish because by default, the option is general or neutral format. So you just saw the examples of general format in text to column. It converts numeric values to numbers, date values to dates, and all the remaining values to text. Next, you will see the application of date format in text to column. So now I'm traveling to the next sheet called format two. Now, if you compare column A and column B dates, you will notice the first column has dot denominations in between date, month, and year. Now Excel can't read this as date. So my suggestion, use text to column to convert the format. You go to data tab, choose text to column, Go to next, next so that you can reach to step three of three. Now, the trick is you choose the option date and from the adjoining drop down, choose DMY. Now why DMY option? Because the current sequence of your date components are D, M and then Y. As you click on finish, you see the date converting correctly. Now just as a bonus trick. If you press Ctrl Shift 3, your date would convert to a format which is more indicative of the date. Try this. Once you have tried this, let me show you another example to reinforce this logic. I choose the second set of date and I can clearly see here the year is first followed by month and then the day. However, there is no delimiter like dot or comma or hyphen. So having chosen this date, I go to data, text to columns, just like last time I go to next, next and reach to the step three. Now this time, can you guess what option should I choose from the given dropdown? I'll pause for two seconds. Yes, it is YMD because it's year, then month and then day. Once I finish, I get the correct format. Now, if you remember from the previous minute, I should be pressing a shortcut key called Control Shift. Yes, you're right. It's Control Shift 3. So friends, we saw text to column is not just used to split the data, but also to correct the formats of date or numbers stored as text. Before I conclude, let me share a bonus trick. That bonus trick is in the next sheet. It's called opposite of text to column. The way you have seen splitting the data. Now I'm going to quickly show you how to combine the data. So one option is using ampersand sign. Yes, the sign will allow you to combine data from multiple cells. Let me show you a demo. I choose Jeffrey. I put the ampersand sign. Then I put a double quote and I put a space in between the pair of these double quotes, followed by another ampersand. Then finally Abney. Enter and you get to see Jeffrey Abney together in one single cell with a space in between. You can also use the function of concatenate. It performs the same action as ampersand. So you can pause the video for a few seconds and compare input and output with respect to this formula. By the way, you could have also used flash fill. To know more, watch our flash fill video. So I hope you loved our text to columns video. 